We know it's not no audience. Yeah, it's relaxing. <laughs> okay. Welcome everybody. It's nice to see that it's not overcrowded this time. <laughs> Finally, some breathing air in here. Now, translation of games. Whom of you participates in game development? Okay, I know those folks do. <laughs> now, why should someone want to translate a game? I don't know. Does any one of you speak another language than English? Maybe have mother tongue? Yeah. Yes. Sounds like. So, how well do you speak English compared to your mother tongue? How well does your nephew or niece speak English? If they want to play the game, they need to understand it. So you need to translate it. Or there may be some people like um, French people who don't like to speak English, who want to play it in French. Can happen. And the main reason to translate games is the main reason why we do anything we do. Because it can be done. Okay, I'm German, as you might hear my accent. Mm, some strange stuff, yeah. I'm working in Westmoss now for some years. I'm doing a lot of stuff. I don't really do know what I do anymore, but I'll just do it somehow. About Westmoss, if you were here in the last talk, you already know it, and I could sp uh, skip it. Was someone not here in the last talk? Sorry, other guys. I need to go through this. <laughs> Westmoss is a turn-based strategy game. Fantasy scenario, single player, multiplayer, blah, 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 blah. The main part, though, where it's different from many other open source games is that it's translated into many languages. 53 languages in the last stable series. How many languages can you count now? I guess you won't be able to list all of the languages we have. Not all of them are completed, sadly. We have seven translations which are at 100%. Those are, for example, French, German, Polish, British English. But more than 18 translations are at least 90% completed. So that you get an idea of how much work it is. How many of you have read The Lord of the Rings? Several. We're on the level of the first two books of The Lord of the Rings to get it 100% translated. Just to give you a rough number. That's user interfaces, that's campaigns, that's translating the manual, all the fun parts which everyone wants to translate first. If we're even looking, now that's only 15,000 strings. String can be one word like org or orb, but it can also be a complete page in the manual. If we now look at user created content, if you were here in the last talk you saw that there are like 500 campaigns and eras and stuff like this available. We are talking about four times the size. No one manages to completely translate it yet. Now, you're not just sitting here because I'm a good speaker. Would be nice if you were, but who knows. So, what I want to tell you is some basics about internationalization what we do, and what you might want to do. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Now, for translations, we are using GetText. Why? Because it works. They are good tools, it's easy to use for translators, and with some script hacking, it's possible to not just use it for C++ code, but also for our own language, which we have in the game to define stuff. Now, in West North, we use it for C++, for Lua, and WML, our own language. The problem is, if you're talking about translators, not all of them are coders. So, there might be some people who are not techies, but who want to contribute to the game, who are good in English, but even better in their mother tongue. Yes. Hmm? In fact, nearly nobody of them is a coder. Um, Mark is a coder. Translate. You're a coder. But I don't translate. You have translated some stuff. Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 He's getting old. Indeed. 
<laughs> so what you basically need to do to really get translators into the project is make it easy. If there are barriers, reduce them, but don't make it too easy. What I'm now saying is contradictory, I know, but it's intentional. The matter is, if you're translating a game, you have a complete storyline. The characters in the dialogue in one scenario still need to feel similar in the second scenario and in the third scenario. They can develop, yes. But if he's saying, Dear Lord, how may I assist you? And the next one is, Hey, yo, man, how can I get this stuff done? It doesn't fit. So you need to be consistent there. So if it's too easy, if you have some drive-by translations, it can easily get down the hill easily. Now, we have some strange structures built to make it easy for single translators. The normal translation consists that you have some translators, you have some translation maintainers who feel responsible for that language, then we have those internationalization managers who handle the technical part like receiving the files and making sure that they are still working, and then we have the strange guy called release manager. He's really freaked out, but... Then we have the text domains. If we had those 15,000 strings all in one huge file, it would be different, uh, difficult for a team of people, like five people, to work on the translation cooperatively. Because of this, we have split it. What makes sense in splitting? Okay, if you have some content which fits together, like one campaign, make it a single text domain. This way, one translator can take care of this one text domain, and it can feel consistent, somehow. Now, we're using, as you can see, many, many tools. Some of them are websites, some of them are scripts. Will all those apply to your projects? Of course not. Now, the main parts are, if you were in the last talk, we had this part about competition, evil competition. This is no competition. We have no ranking there. We don't show those languages first, which are completely translated, like those. And the British English, who are not complete, below those. We don't do this. Right? <laughs> okay. So, why does this help? There can be good competition. In the early days of the development of the game, we used those statistics to encourage the translators to, for example, be faster than the Swedish team. They were very strong, many people working on it, had a good head start, and the German team was playing catch up with them. It was a competition for us to see, hey, now we can finally get them. We made it, of course. <laughs> now, what you see here is the units page. What you see here is the German version. It's not saying units, it's saying Einheiten. No? <laughs> Instead of close combat and range combat, it's Nahkampf and Fernkampf. The matter here is, if you're working on a game, you need to make sure that the content is consistent. So, if in one explanation you name it, okay, use range combat, and in the other you translate it completely differently, players might get confused. Confusion is always not to be done. Now, Having such a list allows translators to look up the terms to find the correct terms for their language. There might even be some better ways to get it done, to have some real dictionary about the stuff, but someone needs to implement that first. The normal translation, as mentioned, for translations, there are good tools. One tool we always recommend is PO Edit. Don't spoil all the fun. <laughs> As you can see here, it's basically very simple. You have the English string. That's how GetText works. It looks for this exact English string and will insert this translation. Oh, wait. This one is fuzzy. As you can see here, those three translations are identical. That's what makes GetText quite good. It looks for similar strings. When a new string appears, which it doesn't know yet, we'll put it in and mark it as fuzzy. You as translator then go in, check, okay, palm forested hills. Okay, it's not just 
forested hills is now a palm forest. So I just needed to adjust this part. So that you can understand the stuff. This saves you some work, sometimes, but it can be often also very far away, especially if you're looking for short terms. In the old days, we had the term orcs in the game. Three letter word, easy word. For the help menu, we added the word orb. Get text, so, oh, it's a 66% match. It needs to be the same, fuzzy. So yes, as humans, still needs to review this. Now, as I mentioned, I'm also somehow responsible for getting new versions out. The problem is, translators are the last guys to get the final stuff and need to be able to get it done before the release is out. It's always bad if you move against a, working t uh, a moving target. Sorry, camera guy. <laughs> so, the problem is, if you are changing all the strings all the time, when should the translators get started? You need to have some period of time in which the strings are frozen, where you don't change the stuff, so that in the end, the translators have a chance to catch up. Translators will always play catch up. You as developers can create new stuff all the time. That's easy. But getting it translated in the end, it's work. It needs weeks. Even if you, especially if you want to proofread. So, string freezers. Good tool. And if you have stable, a stable series, it's even a better tool. Because in the very first release, maybe only one or two languages made it. But in a later release, some more languages might be completed. So that the players who want to play in that language then finally can do so. Now, if you want to implement such a system, strings, if you match them, like say, hmm, attack, fire warrior, nice variable, with next real sword. This could be four lovely parts. As a translator, they will kill you if it's always appearing in this direction and order. In some languages, you will have to change order. So, always make sure that if you have something in the game, make sure there's a context, that you put stuff together. Otherwise, you will have some interesting problems. Then, once you know about some problems, every game will have different problems there. None are identical. Because every game is different. Because not every game does have you. <laughs> Many problems will be identical, but some are special depending on the translations you have, depending on the team members you have, depending on the language you're using. So, think about translators. Update the files. The matter is, get text is based on some generated text files, which need to be matched in the real text. So if you only update shortly before release, translators have no chance to start the catch-up process early on, even if they know that the part of the world will be lost. There are some more files than just what is in the game. So make sure that those are translatable too. If eventually all the normal game stuff is done, maybe translators still want to translate something. Don't reinvent the wheel, blah, blah, blah. Most important part, the last line. You can read, right? Now, what motivates a translator? The first question that you should ask yourself is, what motivates you to work on open source software? To code stuff? To look through stuff? To improve things? Why are you doing this? I think most of you will not say, because I'm getting paid for it. So. Translators are not so different from other contributors. Similar motivations are there. A lot of it is ego. Let's face it. They want to see it's done. I have done it. I've contributed. Then, make sure to listen to the folks. If they have something to say, it might be valid feedback. And they might need some platform to exchange with other translators. Provide it. 
Most of you, if you're working on a game, will have some forum or stuff. Reserve some area in there for translators. It can't hurt too much. Now, how do you start getting translations? As you mentioned, many guys of you are not native English speakers. So you probably have a different mother tongue. Why do you not start the translation? There's no need to complete it. But start it. If you lay a good foundation, others might see it's possible to translate and ask, how can I help? That's basically how the translation in Westnold started. Like in the old days, the translation ma internationalization manager's young daughter started playing. She just understood Swedish. So she wanted the game to be translated somehow. So she spent some time herself on it. Now, use good tools. Like I said, if you have similar strings, it's always good if there's an easy way to move stuff over. If you have, repeat, have to repeat the work over and over, you would also get annoyed. Eventually, you would also leave the project. The same applies to translators. As mentioned, the competition part. What we have done there, instead of just having this table, we got, went a step further. We told the translation teams, the translation team, to get to 100% first, will get for one week the announcement of the new version in their language, exclusively. The English version of the announcement will only be out a week later. Stuff like this is motivating. Now, I've talked a lot about theory. Let's come to the fun part. If you were in the last talk, you already know the screen. Now you're seeing the German version of it. What do you see on there which is translatable? Now, let's first start. There are many buttons, there's text. Obvious, right? Now we have the logo. It might work in some languages, in others it might not work. So, make images translatable. Now, a step further. We have a chart here in the background with some labels on them. So, yes, textures might need to be translatable. This creates a complete new area of problems in the end. Because if you have such a label, and the label size is depending on the string, you see where it's going? You immediately have problems in German. <laughs> <laughs> Here it's beneficial that I'm German. <laughs> But also, if you're looking here at those buttons, as you can see, this term is longer than the other ones. It's the longest term we have in there. It's even longer than the English terms, all of them. So the button sizes here automatically adjust based on the longest string. But why, don't it, why isn't it just Sprache? That would be too easy, Fabi. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are always two ways to fix problems like this. Way one, make it on the code side so that the size of stuff is adjustable in reasonable limits. The other solution is have the translators find a good way. You will find many areas where it's just not possible for translators to find a good way. Very well loved by translators are abbreviations, hit points, HP. Everyone knows this who's an English player. Now, if your little kid is playing it, doesn't the kid really know what HP stands for? Are you sure that in your language there is a two-letter abbreviation for what hit points mean? Stuff like this can be problematic. So, when designing the interface, make sure that some people are involved who speak languages which are more verbose. What's also very nice is having Asian people involved. Their translations do not necessarily require more vertical space, but they might require different font sizes to have it readable. Yeah, not to mention languages which are from up to down or down to up, right to left. Or <laughs> um, at some point, you have to draw a line. <laughs> don't we support? We, su we somehow support right to left. We don't support up to down and down to up. <laughs> okay. Most Chinese and Japanese software doesn't do that either. 
Now, I basically said all the stuff. Um, which I didn't mention yet is, genders are fun. <laughs> genders are huge fun. Because genders do not only have an effect upon the string itself, so like the unit. So, we have the prince, we have the princess. That's known in English, right? Now, we have the warrior. What's the female term for warrior in English? It's still warrior. Easy. In German, it's Krieger and Kriegerin. Now, if we're going a step further, like, say, I think it was in Hungarian, we have some terms which describe characteristics of a unit. Like a unit is quick, so it can move fast. Now, there is no difference on this term in German. But in Hungarian, it matters. Because if it's quick for a female, it's different than quick for a male. So don't underestimate this. Another nice one, context. Preferences often have the term general. Now, we're talking about a military game. There are sometimes units called general. So you need to have a way to distinguish between the content, uh, context. If something is really in a different context, make the difference. It might work in German, it might even work in um, English, it might work in many other languages you will come across some languages where it doesn't work. So make sure you have a system for it. Now, you already mentioned left to right. Fonts. I already said that. What I didn't say yet is plural forms. Now, the best example is you have still one gold piece to collect. You need to collect ten gold pieces. Many languages you probably speak have one and many. Many languages you don't speak have one, some, even more, many, really many. <laughs> and how about languages that have uh, a special form for numbers that end in one, two, three, and may be a multiple of 20 uh, prefix? <laughs> there, are, there are languages with five or six plural forms with really strange rules, but eventually they start repeating. <laughs> so, trust me, when you look at translations, you will find the worst stuff imaginable. Now, as I already said, text, easy. More text, still easy. Whenever you have images, you might want to allow the people to provide translated versions of the images. Especially in the context of a help system. As I already said, there needs to be some complexity to it. Make sure that the teams are, the other translation teams, when new translation is started, already have some lessons learned from the older teams. One of those lessons is the list of common terms. It really eases your life. Now, if you make sure that some single persons of that team feel responsible for a domain, good start. Coordination. If you have a team, it's good to have it. Now, as you might have already seen, the basics of just translate single word can be easy. There will be many things which you don't consider on the first look. So if you implement a translation system, it's good if not a US person who only speaks English implements it. Someone speaking two languages is a good start. Making sure to talk to people who speak more languages is a very good start. And it's even better if you have those people implement the translation system, try to translate a little themselves. Then they will easily see some shortcomings. Abbreviations. Lovely. <laughs> now, do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Do you dislike translations? Just a question about your game. Um, do you have support for <coughs> do you have support for color awareness and emotional context of things? For example, uh, in English, color red signifies danger. In Chinese, it signifies celebration. 
there was a, a case where uh, an English uh, teacher in Japan got into a huge amount of trouble with the school because they were marking the text with a green pen, which is only used in Japanese culture for pornography and seduction. And, uh, you know, do, do you have kind of something to cope with that in your game? No. So if, if Japanese kids are playing your game, does it show green text? I'm working on it. We don't have it yet, as you hear. I wasn't aware of the problem. As I mentioned, he will always come across new problems. We haven't, we don't have it yet, but he will work on it. <laughs> uh, so, when you're implementing uh, features of the game which are text heavy, uh, which are the best languages to, to test for corner cases? I know French is good for long. Really, uh, German is also German is also pretty good. Yeah, uh, French, German, Polish mm. are always very very long sentences, but there are other stuff like top to bottom, left to right, special characters. Uh, um, left to right, you first need to have a language, someone speaking a language, yeah. which does it. Um, there are just a limited French number. Arabic. Gotcha. Arabic, Hebrew, those are the common ones. Most projects will probably not have a developer speaking those languages. Try to reach out into your community. Uh, I'm also asking uh, what kind of problems I'm going to encounter, which will be sort of obvious when I try a specific language. As I, as I said, I have on the screen the mm -hmm. link of the string, but maybe mm -hmm. something else. Yep, yep. How to see the problems. That's a good one. Um, you won't be able to notice in most cases. No joke there. If you don't speak the language, you won't be able to notice many of the problems. The obvious glitches you will notice. But if you don't speak, say, Hebrew or Arabic, you won't be able to tell if it's from left to right or right to left. And at some point we had a problem with the bidirectional library that we use. And the Arab was still right to left, but the actual letters didn't connect. But we don't have any Arabic speaking people on the team. So we didn't actually notice until it had been released. Oh. <laughs> With other words, there will be translation problems which are in releases. It's something which GetText supports. GetText does support it. You just need to make sure that the string itself is marked as containing a plural form, and then get text has the support for it. In the header, it's defined um, for the language, the available plural forms. Let me just open a file to show you. Here you can see the header. You see one line in here for the plural forms. As you can see here, we have two plurals, and there's a plural if the number is not one. So that's a pretty simple rule. I think Hungarian has a different one. Hmm. Polish? So, you can see, it looks a little different. But GetText also already has this feature. The tools know that it's there, and they will then offer you the fields for those plural forms. So the support is there. You just need to know where the support is required. That's a very good question. Reviews. Um, that's why I said it's good to have translation maintainers. Basically, the translation maintainer is responsible for consistency. It depends on them to look through patches that they get, to talk to people to define the basic line to take, and handle those basics and coordinate between those. How good you can actually do it Let's say it this way. We have English US and British English. It is possible to support different languages. Yes? Um, if you have so many different languages, um, how do you 
display them on. I have problems with special characters all the time. And so now I started using a different font for each language. What do you do? Okay, what you can see in here it's already a tiny part of the list. As you can see in here, this looks very Arabic to me. Then we have the normal Karelian characters. We have runes. We got some Hebrew. That's one of the Chinese dialects, or is it Japanese? I don't know. That's definitely a Chinese. So, we have a definition for this where we have or hardwired um, no fonts <laughs> So we just have a definition of the available fonts, but the most important part is we have a list of fonts, actually two lists, and the very first string which every translation team should translate is the font order. Because the font order there defines which font is used for them, and if a character is not found in that font, the next is tried, and so on and so on. So it's a pretty simple but still working system. It might not work for the translation selection, there it might be broken and showing wrong characters. So for example, we have the problem with Chinese and Japanese. They basically require different fonts because some of the characters have the d same code but should look different. So a Japanese might still recognize the character but it's just wrong for them. Since they are still able to recognize it, it's good enough for the selection. But for the actual display, then they are able to define that the different one is used. Mm -hmm. uh, first one is, um, have you isolated the, the, the strings and the kind of um, whatever API you built for that so that the, um, the strings could be reused in another game? For example, if someone wanted to make an, an FPS as opposed to an overhead game or something like that, so that's one question. Um, it might also be a way of bringing in new translators if you have another game which is using the same core set of strings. The second question is, thinking of this as a language education tool, um, do you provide uh, pronunciation guides? For example, Japanese and Chinese, you can write extra characters underneath your uh, kanji or your hands mm. to indicate how to say the words, no. uh, which is otherwise impossible to get. Um, part two, that's easier to answer. No, we don't provide this. Part one, we basically directly extract on the fly from our content the strings. So basically, to show you an example, Uh, here you see one of our config files and here you see a story screen. We have this description text and it's marked with the underscore as translatable. Those strings will then be taken out of this file and into the PO file. It will then appear in here as string. So that's basically all we have as database. As you can see here in the string, you have the ID and get text will just do a exact matching. So it will look for is this string appearing there? Is it exactly the string? Okay, if I find it, I replace it with this string. There are some more slight rules required, like you always have to have the same number of new lines at the end of the string, stuff like this, but that's like technicalities. It's basically just doing a string matching and replacement. It seems like what you've got here is kind of, um, I mean, how many times does the world need to have the word warrior translated into three different languages, especially in the open source community where we use Yes, yes. Um, there are ways in the tools to create dictionaries. Basically, you can use dictionaries in those tools that they will automatically create some stuff. The problem is if you're working inside longer strings, it's all for nothing in the end. It will be doing exact matching, 
So as long as you have the exact drum there, okay. But if you have the word warrior in, let's say, or evil mage, very common term in fantasy, we got it right here. But the translation tool will have problems to make sure that it's really the correct connection of the terms. Languages are just complex. There is a project that tries to collect all this translation data from different projects. I forget its name, but they are trying to get some sort of unit, yeah, unified translator or something. <laughs> I just bootstrap a new project or a new game or something like instantly offering. Um, that is, we do have tools which allow us to migrate strings which are exact matches from one file to the other. So if we see that in one file we have the word mage, we can easily, if it's just this single word, and if it's identical in string in the other domain, we can easily mi migrate it over. It's some basic text matching, stuff like this. That's possible, yes. That's also possible with some of the tools that you build dictionaries and have them automatically use that for the files you're working at, but it's still a pretty hard problem. Yeah, the thing is that this essentially is building a translator, and a translator is an unsolved problem. I mean, you can translate warrior from English to German, it's fine, but just try to translate it in Polish, where you have nine, uh, nine uh, or eight uh, declination forms, where in uh, English I don't have, I don't, you don't have any declination. And the point is that the word will be translated, but it will be totally out of context. It must have been a contextual game dictionary, though, where warrior in a particular context in the game can be reused. I mean, how many differences are I there between fantasy words? I don't believe a language to define the context. Sorry, say again? I don't believe there is a language or a mythology, yeah. mythology to define the context. There is a mythology, it was called a dictionary. And you have different units <laughs> for every project. We like to, to have some Shakespeare uh, English that sounds a little bit medieval, and we also want the translation to be uh, Old, sounding old school, yeah? And yeah, when you just take a string out of a library that translated KDE or something else, yeah? Okay. Imagine, though, for example, if, I, if I'm a new game author, okay, and I also have a medieval world, which is quite a common setting, it's fantastic for me if I make a compromise with my choice of language and say, well, I'm just going to use the strings from your project, because I know if I do that and I make my world fit around them, then I can reuse all this other stuff that you guys have done yeah. to make the game happen okay. faster. So I'm just wondering if, if As mentioned, if you use if you know that there are some games with a good translation, you can in theory build this database yourself and apply this then on your game. So that would be able uh, would be a probably good starting point for some basic terms. So yeah, that should work. We haven't done it, but it should work. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. What, what I see here is that uh, you don't use uh, string keys to uh, uh, in your content. You just use uh, English a version to define to yeah. gather yes, yes. Uh, other languages. Uh, so what happens if somebody figures, oh, there's a typo here, or if this sentence totally doesn't make sense, I'll fix it. And that translation. We have a lovely tool in here, which is pretty empty in this version, but. In this version, it's not as empty. We have a basic tool which does string matching and replacements. This way, if we just fix a typo, we enter the broken text, fix text, run the script, no fuzzy, done. That's what I also mentioned and meant with use tools. Any more questions? Don't you believe that so many languages is kind of unnecessary? For example, I saw Greek there inside. I'm Greek. And mm -hmm. I know that no no one in Greece they wants to play games in Greek. Check on that from Greece as well. Um. I mean, I mean, for example, a D and D version came out in Greek for the first time like four years ago, five? No, no one played that. It, it, it was just inside zone for the whole community that yeah. oh they translate this thing into that, which is pretty fine. <laughs> I mean, um, I know, and also I also saw that the guy who made the translation is has uh, he writes Elinka mm -hmm. and Elinka in English is so stupid. It's Elinka in Greek because Elinka in English is Greek, it's not Elinka. So I mean, it's it's too much for for a translation that no one, but no one's gonna use. Um, 
Uh, we are an open source project. Uh, we, our motive. For example, the guy, uh, the, the guy here said the kids got paid. Uh, most kids in Greek after 12 years mm -hmm. old, they they all they all can play a game in English. Almost all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he has a lot of story. You can follow the story. They still can. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I mean, you when did. I, we, you did when you were 12, right? When I was young, I didn't follow much of the Pokemon. He didn't story. try to follow the story. <laughs> 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 Um, I understand your question. I mean, um, some how some do you decide? Are, are you friendly to English? Some, some are, are you can start. For example, German kids are care. so friendly to yeah. English. Um, honestly, our point on this is we don't care. We do have a Latin translation. Who would play in Latin? Honestly. <laughs> we do have this translation. Why do we have it? Someone came to us and said, I would like to do a translation to Latin. No, I mean, so if anyone wants to translate to Klingon, <laughs> please ping me. <laughs> so my point is, just what you do it. Instead of having 40 languages and the 90% of them be 90% complete, you can just have 10 languages and be correct through and through. From start to end to be all the correct things. No, it doesn't work. Because those who can translate to, say, Greek, might not be able to translate to German. Yeah, but those that translate, for example, uh, but if someone wants to translate to Greek, in Russian, why stop them? It would be also for Polish people. It would be also easy to understand them. For example, uh, or the from question Spanish is to Portuguese, it would solve so many languages that they're very, very, very much simpler. The question is, if someone wants to do the work, why stop them? I don't know. I mean, you're, just you're not paying them. Yeah, I know. For this point, sorry. Okay, if we're talking about some business environment, if we're talking about some product which is meant to be sold, I understand the point. If you need to hire translators, give them money, I understand it. If all you need to do is provide infrastructure. Those contributors can do another job if they want to. If they want to and are able to. But they already want to do the translation. Otherwise they wouldn't have told us they want to do it. There are messages out there. In our experience, there's like zero overlap between translators to say Spanish and contributors to code. So there's really no reason to stop someone from translating to their language because we'll make them happy and it will make your feature list look awesome. If you can say, we have translated our game into 20 languages, people will be like, wow, you must be an awesomely big project. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have to slightly disagree with you there. Many of our developers who are not native English speakers, helped in their respective translations. Even if it was just for two or three pages, they did help a little. Yeah, sure, so yes, we took part. some development time away. But still, it's a good way to kickstart I mean, translations. For example, for texts from uh, right to left. Yeah. 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 For just like 20 people. And 20 people probably just play with. I mean, in the, in, in, uh, for, for the specific language. That's right. Do you have any statistics on the language usage? No. Okay. We have no statistics about this, sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to refer to uh, the movie world, actually, where uh, jumping is actually one of the most common things in some languages. Mm -hmm. uh, the stories in the movies, as well as the emotion, uh, sort of gets lost while translating. And we want to know if this is also an issue in translating in the game. It can be. Um, it can be. The matter is, you need to have a translation team with a maintainer who is something like, as Fabi said, a dictator. You need to have some set of rules and a person who sets some standards there. If you don't have this, the quality will suffer. That's right. You also have translations where the story of the thing has been written. The translation maintainer decided they didn't like the existing story, so they used the translations to just move things in a different direction. <laughs> same same gameplay, gameplay is still happening. Um, the best example for this is uh, could you please wait a little? We're not done yet. Um, the best example we have there is Asian translation. The translator to one of the Chinese versions said, hmm, this mythology with the king and the heir to the throne, it doesn't really work nicely. But if I make him a descent of dragons, it works. So he rewrote the story to match their methodology somehow. 
yes, it's a huge amount of work. So the quality between translations is different depending on the people working on it. Just as your code quality is. It's basically all the same. No matter if it's artwork, if it's code, if it's translations. You have good ones, you have bad ones. And you're happy about all of them. Anything else? <laughs>